John Spark here from Your Travel Planners and thank you for dropping in. I know you're probably here because you're interested in cruising and uh, I'd just like to give you a little bit of a background of what we're trying to achieve tonight. Our number one goal is to help you choose a better cruise for yourself. There are hundreds, thousands of cruises in fact available to you and depending on whether you're a first time cruiser or an experienced cruiser there'll be different criteria. Now I want to be right up front and say it's impossible for us to give you the exact answer here tonight without having some sort of dialogue with you to customise the information and we will give you that opportunity later in the presentation to actually get some customised information from either Nilla, who's the lady on the left with 30 years worth of travel experience and Kelly on the right who is our national award winning consultant for the Jet Set Network. They'll both be giving you a little bit of an oversight of their understanding of cruising, Nilla on her experiences and Kelly on you know, the different things like cabins and uh, different aspects of cruise ships you need to consider. Also probably worth stating that uh, Nilla and I have both done uh, 16 cruises each, ranging from the Nile to the Pacific to the Alaska, Caribbean, and Kelly's done a number of cruises as well. So we are uh, wanting to share our experiences. And in fact, the background of this is that we do quite a number of offline presentations where we invite people into our office at night time to uh, do a half hour to a 45 minute cruise presentation and then answer questions. Now what we've done is actually condense this presentation down a little bit because obviously in a live presentation we have a lot of opportunity to include uh, feedback and ask questions along the course of the night. Can't do that so easy tonight. Although you can take a note of your questions and use the form at the end of this presentation to submit them to us. So. Without too much further ado, I'm going to just give you the overall introduction, then I'm going to hand you over to Nilla who will share her experience, then on to Kelly, and then finally I'll give a summation at the end. So please, sit back, enjoy, and let's see where we go from here. Number one, our purpose is to provide you with the most thoroughly researched cruise information from personal experiences, our core suppliers, and from client feedback. So we want to mix all of those up to help you. So you can feel comfortable about making the best informed decision possible on your future cruises. Now, it is highly important for us that not only are you comfortable making a decision about the right cruise, but also that you're comfortable when you leave. So many people come to us these days after using the internet and booking their travel and uh, finding that everything sort of looks good, but they're not comfortable. And they're not comfortable because they just don't know whether their arrangements are going to work out. That comes about from two things. One, they might not really know what they're doing, and two, they just don't have industry experience. And uh, most people today can't afford to have an unnecessary muck up. So that's what we meant by comfortable. We want you to be feeling that as if you've got the absolute best information, most relevant at the time, and you're going to feel good about it. Here's a couple of facts, and uh, I won't bother reading them out because it's pretty much stated there, but as you can see, it's uh, the population of cruise is not very high, although at the same time you'll hear a lot of people tell you they've been on a cruise. To me it seems like more than two or so percent of the Australian population has cruised. Also there's a uh, huge amount of new ships coming on and that can only mean there's going to be a lot of specials and bargains going forward. But you will have to be careful if you wait for a bargain and miss it then uh, you could be disappointed if that's the only time that you can get away on a cruise. Some of our personal cruise experiences include the destinations you've got down there, not to mention all of them of course, but some of the highlights and as you can see on the right hand side there, there's the uh, wind song. Now that was my highlight cruise. It was a cruise that uh, went around Hawaii for seven days, Tahiti sorry, for seven days and during the course of that cruise we had 110 crew looking after about 90 of us so it was full on, it was fantastic. Uh, and the other good feature about that ship is those sails were all electric. So they actually came up and went down at the push of a button and at certain points that ship sailed under full steam between nine and, well, under full wind between nine and 11 knots. The most incredible experience to be on a boat with no noise whatsoever and enjoying it. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna hand you over to Nilla who's going to do her side of the, um, 
presentation, which involves mostly what her experiences are, to give you some idea of the types of cruises that she's had, the depth of background, and it ranges over 30 years. One of the first trips she ever did in her life was a cruise, even before she became a travel consultant. So, uh, over to you, Nilla. Thank you. Hi, Nilla Spark from Your Travel Planners, and welcome to my presentation of cruising and my cruising experiences. I've been really fortunate in uh, that I've been cruising for a long time. I started when I was 19 and I love cruising. I've cruised to all different parts of the world and I'd like to share with you quickly all the different parts of the world, not to gloat but just to show you the different places that you A, can cruise and what each area offers and also what you can experience. So here we go. My first cruise, as I said, was to the South Pacific. The South Pacific, I started off in um, Perth, oh, in Perth, I flew from Perth to Sydney, cruised from Sydney to um, New Zealand and all the different islands. It was a 21 day cruise and it was pretty awesome. I was a 19 year old, had lots of fun, did the can can, you name it. I was sharing in a four berth cabin and um, that was pretty testy but you know what it didn't matter I was young the only thing was that I was sharing in those days you were able to share with strangers I was sharing with a lady that was a little bit older than myself and she found it a little bit difficult with me coming in at all hours of the morning so tip when you do share with strangers just make sure that they're around your age group the next place that I went to was um, I did a ship jet to London where in my my dream when I was young was to travel and I wanted to go to London one way and I was going to work and travel Europe and be away for 12 months. You know the dreams that a lot of us young ones, well not me now, but a lot of the young ones want to do now. I had a lot of options in those days but the option that I chose was cruising from Fremantle through to Singapore in Indonesia which was Bali and Jakarta, I had to think then and into Singapore and then from Singapore we flew to London and hence it was called Shipjet. It was a great way of starting to travel, it was a great way for me to meet people along the way. They don't do that anymore but it was a great option. The next cruise is, um, I was to the Caribbean, that was lots of fun. That was um, exciting, different, um, that was on a beautiful cruise ship, it was a, um, the Sun Princess. So I had my taste of a really beautiful luxury cruise. The other two were that luxurious. So if you want to spoil yourself, look at the different ships that you can get on. And if you want a little bit of luxury and a little bit of spoil yourself, then I'd highly recommend that you do that. The next um, is Tahiti. My God, Tahiti was amazing. It was a... Um, cruise that John, my husband and I actually, it was a, a incentive, not an incentive, uh, what do you call it? a reward trip that we had with um, Jet Set and it was a beautiful, like this huge yacht and you felt like you were the only ones on this yacht, it was absolutely fantastic. Again, if you want a bit of luxury and a little bit of difference and you want to actually experience the islands or wherever you go, the small ships can be a wonderful option and an alternative. The next was the Gemini. I'm not sure if a lot of you remember the Gemini. She was the ship that actually got the West Australians to start cruising. She was a beautiful little ship. She was only like 800 passengers and seven days out of Singapore up to Phuket, Penang, Langkawi, um, Malacca, no I didn't go to Malacca, Kuala Lumpur, beautiful, it was fantastic and she catered for the Australians and the Australians loved her, embraced her and she was the one, I can honestly say, that got cruising happening for the West Australians. Also cruised with the Gemini, the Leo, they're larger ships, about 2,000 passengers, again beautiful ships and they Virgo still cruises from Singapore right now for five days. So if you're looking for Asia, and also a tip, 
the Asian waters, especially between Singapore and Phuket, are so calm. So if you're a first time cruiser, brilliant place to start cruising. I can remember we were on board the Gemini upstairs having a drink and listening to the band and I looked around and there was a pool and I went, John, are we moving? Because there wasn't even a ripple on the on the pool. So if you're worried about cruising and you want to give it a go, those waters are the best place to start cruising. The next was, oh my God, Alaska. We cruised, we've been fortunate enough to cruise there about three or four times. One of the first cruises was from San Francisco, went up the coast into the Alaskan bays. Absolutely beautiful. Um, I don't know whether I would do that cruise, that type of cruise again, but it was an experience. If you love or if you want to relax and do absolutely nothing, the open ocean cruising is great because there's nothing you can do. Just relax and enjoy the ship. And then once you get into um, the ports, then you can do lots of things. We did the celebrity cruise on that. And for me, uh, from my opinion, uh, the celebrity cruise is probably one of the best cruise ships that I've cruised on in, as far as the bigger ships. Then we went to Mauritius and we did a day, a cruise from Mauritius. It's not really a cruise cruise, but I just wanted to share that when you do go to these islands and you love the water and you want to see what it's like to see the land from the ocean, just jump on a, um, a day cruise or a catamaran cruise and, and just enjoy what cruising has to offer. Seeing the land from the ocean, it's magnificent. Love that one. Actually, I did that on my birthday, so that was a really, really special treat. The next one is we were in Peru and we did the Amazon. That was amazing. Just cruising down the Amazon again. It was only for a day and it sort of inspired me to maybe one day doing a cruise actually down the Amazon. The forest, um, the animals, oh, it's just beautiful. It's just eerily special. So that's the end of my presentation of showing you all the different areas that I have been. So look forward to speaking to you again. Bye. Hey, Kel here from Your Travel Planners. Well, today I'm here to help all of you try and decide what is the best cruise for you. I'm going to run you through a series of slides and hopefully um, plant some questions in your mind that will be able to help you in the future if you decide to go on a cruise. So if any of you have any questions after the presentation, you can just email us um, and we will help you further. But hopefully this will try and help you understand some of the technical aspects of a cruise and, um, and then fingers crossed you can book one. It's very exciting. So let's start off with some quirky facts. I found this on the internet and I just I love stuff like this. It just it blows me away. I mean, imagine fifty thousand eggs. I mean that that's just insane. Imagine seeing them actually load fifty thousand eggs onto the ship and seeing them all in one hit. And another one. This is crazy. Two thousand five hundred kilometers of electric cable. That's like four trips to Perth. That's just amazing. Anyway, let's go. So, uh, something that I would ask everyone who come in and sat with me to do a cruise was, uh, have you cruised before? Um, it helps me understand if you've got any expectations or what, you're, what, what you did do and maybe I can help you further from there. So, it's a good, good place to start. Fingers crossed you don't do a cruise like that ship there. <laughs> Okay, questions to think about is when you're looking at cruising. When you're looking at cruising is going to determine, you know, where you cruise. Um, for example, uh, you know, you might have in your mind doing a, um, a cruise to a tropical destination and something exotic and you see some adverts in the paper for cruising in Europe from $1,200, but those cruises might be in February. Now, this is obviously not going to suit because it's uh, winter in Europe in February, so that's probably not going to be the best. Time of year that you cruise also determines sometimes the weather patterns, obviously. Um, a consideration, for example, would be if you're looking at cruising in the Pacific. So when I mean by the Pacific would be Fiji, Vanuatu, Samoa, places like that. Now, during our winter, it's the perfect time to go out there because it's sort of their dry season. However, having said that, obviously, if you're cruising from Sydney or Brisbane, 
in winter, you could encounter some cold and rough weather until you actually get out to the Pacific. So that's something else you may want to just think about if you've never cruised before. So where can you cruise? Um, I guess there's so many places out there now that you can cruise and it's not just limited to ocean cruising. You can cruise around the um, rivers in Europe, there's uh, rivers in um, Russia as well, you can go up through the fjords in um, Norway, you can cruise on the Mekong um, in uh, Vietnam and Cambodia. So. There's so much out there that you can cruise and it's just um, it's becoming more and more popular so there's more cruises coming to our market all the time. How long should I go for? <laughs> Million dollar question. Um, how long is a piece of string? To be honest with you it really just depends um, if you've cruised before or if you haven't. Personally myself um, a hint would be for your first time cruise go for something a little bit shorter in duration. It's just going to give you a taste for cruising. That way, if you don't like it, or you know, if cruising's not for you, you haven't, you're not on the cruise for 20 odd days. You know, you're just doing a short one to start with, and if you really love it, you can book something a little bit longer next time. I would never go booking someone on a 40, 50 night cruise coming into the office if they've never cruised before. It'd just be a little bit of a risk. <laughs> Am I going to get seasick? You know what? You might do. Um, I got really seasick when I did my Antarctic cruise a couple of years ago. Um, we had to cross the Drake Passage to get down to the Antarctic Peninsula and um, I got extremely sick. Um, my partner was walking around all the time but um, I was extremely sick in the cabin. I did take something for it and I managed to sleep and there's always doctors on board the ship so if you get really bad you know there's always someone that you can see. But there are, there are things that we can do to help you um, try and overcome your seasickness and one of those things is where you're actually placed on board the ship. If we can get you as close to midship as possible, and what I mean by midship is if you cut the ship in half both lengthways and um, the other way as well, if you, we can get you sort of as close to the middle of the ship as possible, it's going to stop movement on the ship. So that's something that we can try and help you with once we pick your cabin on board. Which takes me to uh, your cabin types. So what are the different cabins? You always hear uh, advertising, you know, inside, your outside, your porthole, but what does it all mean? So I'm going to run you through a few different uh, cabins now. All right, let's start with the inside cabins. Inside cabins are always your cheapest cabins on board, which is fantastic. Um, it brings the price of the cruises right down. Negative being you've got no natural sunlight in the cabin, so you never know what time of day it is. I was lucky enough to experience an inside cabin with my mum when we went on the Virgo last year and it was fantastic. I loved the cruise but every time we went into our cabin we had to turn the lights on. You have to set your alarm to get up in the morning otherwise to be honest with you I could have slept all day. You just never know what time of day it is and for those people that maybe suffer from a little bit of claustrophobia I probably wouldn't recommend an inside cabin. So just be careful when you're looking out there in the papers at cruise specials because nine times out of ten they'll always advertise an inside cabin. This is a snapshot of a deck plan um, on the Princess Cruise Line ship. You can see there I've highlighted the inside cabins with the red arrows. They're the pink and the yellow cabins and you can see that they're actually on the inside of the ship so you're not going to have the, the windows or anything like that. This is a picture of a inside cabin that mum and I had on the Virgo. Uh, great cabin, don't get me wrong, you know, it was um, very roomy, but again, like I said, no natural sunlight, always having to have the light on. Sometimes it felt a little bit stuffy at times, so um, if I go again, it'll definitely be either a window or a balcony. So your outside cabins are basically the opposite of your inside. They're the ones on the outside that have either a window or a porthole. Now what I mean by that is a window is going to be a square window and a porthole is normally just like a little round window. Um, it depends on the ship and depends on the structure and the layout um, but we can help you with that. This is a picture of an outside cabin on the Superstar Virgo, the same cruise that mum and I did. You can see there the great the great big window which is fantastic, lets a lot of sunlight in. Also in the top right hand corner you'll notice that um, there's that box sitting on the wall. That's actually a bed that comes down so you can have pe three people in that cabin. Again your outside cabins, I've put an um, arrow there, you can see there the orange and the green ones. My favourite, balcony cabins. 
I was um, lucky enough to experience a balcony cabin when I went to uh, where did I go? Los Angeles last year. Sorry, I did a cruise down to the Mexican Riviera, and we had a balcony cabin, and it was fantastic. Being able to access the outdoors and the fresh air is just brilliant. You can have breakfast out there if you order room service. You can go out there and read during the day. If you're pulling into port, you can go out there and just hang over the side of your balcony and see what's going on in port without having to sort of fight the crowds on the deck. And it's like when you're cruising along, and depending on where you're cruising, it's having your own personal view, um, which is fantastic as well. This is a picture of my balcony um, when I did my cruise in February last year. This one is actually a really large balcony, so there's some cruise ships out there that don't have balconies as large as this, but this is just to give you an idea. Okay, so which cruise line? There's plenty out there, but hopefully we can help you choose the right cruise for you, depending on the questions that we had above, you know, when you're looking at cruising and how long we have and, you know, have you cruised before, but this is just to give you an idea of how many cruise lines are actually out there. Hopefully this has helped you gain a little bit more knowledge on how to choose the best cruise for you. If you would like some more customised help, put the address below in your browser, fill out the form and I can be in contact with you and help. So until then, have a fab day. Well hi there, it's John Spark back and I'd just like to say we're almost at the end. Only one more thing to do after this little summary and that will be to complete the form which I give clear instructions on to get your own customised help. Again, our purpose tonight was to give you the best possible information we could to ensure that you do feel comfortable about making a good decision about your next cruise, even if it's not the cruise right at this point. Uh, we've had a lot of fun doing this and we hope that you have also will get a lot of fun out of your next cruise, because that's what they are. They are a tremendous amount of fun, as Nilla can attest from more than 16 cruises and Kelly from the cruises that she's done particularly of late. And that's one little advantage that we can offer at the moment. While we've done a lot of cruises over a long period of time, Kelly has done more cruises than us in the last five years. So uh, she's really up to date with exactly what's going on with the cruise ships and what's available. So please avail yourself of our knowledge. Think about how you can uh, go out and, and really have a fantastic cruise holiday. We urge you to do it. It's a beautiful way to travel and a fun, fun event, especially if you're doing it with a family. So please stay tuned as I uh, lead you through how to get some customised information and feel free to add any feedback you like, good or bad, constructive or otherwise, to help us improve our future cruise presentations. This is John Spark on behalf of Nilla and Kelly saying, Thank you so much for turning up and sharing this with us today. Cheers. Okay, here we are at the Your Travel Planner site. All you had to do was type in www.yourtravelplanners.com.au and this is where you'll end up. Just going down the page a little bit, you'll see you've got uh, the, the travel show. I'm pointing, sorry. You've got the uh, travel show, which Nilla updates every week, and she just gives you some ins and outs of what's going on on a weekly basis, some of the itineraries she works on, some of the challenges the clients face, and there's some good stuff in there for you. We've got various holiday types down there. We're putting more presentations up as we speak. This will be one of them, some inspirational travel ideas. This is where we research a destination and make our own personal recommendation in detail of an itinerary. Stand by for the New Zealand and the China uh, Egypt presentations going up over the next week or so. And a bit below we have various blog posts, we put two or three or more up a week and then underneath we have some uh, other sort of highlighted packages that are, a lot of people have been interested in. But what I want you to do now though, if you're looking for some customised help, is go to this tab that I've got my mouse over, hit Customise Travel. And in a second it'll come up, there she comes. We come over to here and I'll just show you what's on there. We've got an introduction video on there where, uh, as you can see, basically we're here to help you have the best holiday possible. Underneath that, what we want you to do is tell us what is your next travel. And you use the drop down box for when it's coming up. I should say, not what. And uh, then complete what is your most pressing question or questions based on tonight's presentation. Or perhaps it's not even related to that, maybe it's something totally different. Put them in there anyway. Put in your contact details so we know who we're talking to, and then ask us uh, what's the best. Let us know. Or sorry, what's the best time to get back to you? Our phone number, if you prefer us to phone rather than email, and then just click on 
uh, either Nilla or Kelly, uh, if you, depending on who you want to give you the help, hit the send and then that's it. So that's all I wanted to say. Uh, love to hear from you. It's been a pleasure putting this together for you tonight. We look forward to helping you have the best cruise possible. So this is John Spark from Your Travel Planner saying, remember, without your travel planner, you are on your own.